Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today we're here with the proud Dawi. They are going to be taking on the green skins. This is another replay submitted by Shetland Apache. After seeing my shameful display in the tournament against uh, my son Herbert Walker, decided to send me some replays of him doing very well with Gyros. Uh, Gyros, I'm not the biggest fan of, but we'll see how they do here. He's got, uh, let's see, two brimstone guns here in the center, steam guns out to the flanks, a nice tight box of dwarves here, grumbling guard. He's got some uh, dwarf warriors. There's uh, iron breakers in here, nor grimlings, and one regular group of iron breakers, Belagar iron hammer as well. He's got some corlers and dragonback slayers, so a nice tight dwarf build. Looks like the uh, a cannon in here as well. Opening up shots, already going after these Black Orcs here, as are the Brimstone Guns. There's one unit of Black Orcs, some Skulkers, Warlords, Boys, and Squigs up on the left flank. In the center, we've got Orc Boys, Savage Orcs. Looks like Grimgor leading the way. We've got a Night Goblin Shaman, some more Squig Herds, Night Goblins, Black Orcs out to the flanks. Some Squig Hoppers coming around as well. And uh, yeah, these quick hoppers trying to get back and get to the cookie jar to shut down the cannon here. Looks like the cannon crew has taken quite a bit of damage. Mighty Elstone being used to give them more melee defense and expert charge defense. As uh, Belgar is trying to hold things together here, looks like the uh, Teeth Rabas were not able to rob any of the Teeth here. Fortunately, being left in combat a little bit long against these uh, dwarves here, the Grumbling Guard, the Dwarf Warriors. There's even a few of the Norgrumlings Ironbreakers mixed in there. They're going to do just fine holding the line. And the gyros are going to start shooting in the back here. Let's see, the rest of the gyros, the steam guns, are actually back here working on Grimgore. And they are actually able to do a pretty good amount of damage. They don't do a whole lot of area of effect damage, but they do have pretty good armor piercing. Meanwhile, the steam guns should be going after the lighter uh, green skins infantry, the lower armor stuff. Yeah, you can see the dwarf warrior, uh, the dwarf position rather, is relatively secured here. Squig Herd's gonna try and come through as the slayers, dragonback slayers, respond and absolutely just cut them to ribbons here. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, steam guns going off all across the board here, doing a ton of damage. You can see they just blow up these light armor troops. I actually do like the steam guns quite a bit because of the explosion damage. They can do very well at shooting these uh, low armor infantry, especially the high model count stuff like goblins. Does very, very well there, but uh, sneaky stabbing on those savage orcs as they kind of pile in here. I'm not sure that the greenskins honestly have the infantry stopping power to cut through like the grumbling guard and the norgrumlings ironbreakers in the center, but we'll see. The black orcs are just about in, in the fight now. They definitely have the uh, armor piercing damage. It's just a matter of if they can get the melee attack buffs that they need. As it stands right now, the gyros are continuing to kind of whittle down on the flanks. The two uh, brimstone guns have used up about half their ammo so far. Uh, Grimgore took quite a bit of damage there. Now they probably want to start focusing on the Black Orcs if they can, but we'll see. Cannon is still online somehow. I'm not really sure how, but uh, right here in the middle of all this mess, they are still here. And looks like some more blasting charges being thrown out. The Iron Breakers and the Dwarf Warriors holding the line very, very well here. Uh, unfortunately, the Runesmith is now tangled up with Grimgore and the Night Goblin Shaman. That's going to be a little bit rough. Not sure where Belagar is at. Looks like he's in the area as well. But uh, the Steam Guns will do a ton of damage to those uh, lightly armored Savage Orcs. And, of course, the uh, Bombs will as well. A nice bombing run coming in. Doing a ton of damage to these... Uh, Various green skins units and point blank fire from the cannon as well, firing in here. So yeah, pretty good stuff. You can see the balance power is uh, staying pretty heavily in favor of the dwarves. Looks like uh, some desperate fanatics going to be unleashed here. They will do some good damage to the slayers because of the lack of armor, but the rest of the dwarf warriors won't take a whole lot of damage. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, just an absolute slugfest here in the pits. The uh, Black Orcs are able to dish out a pretty good amount of damage, but there's just not quite enough of them to really pull this fight out. But you can see here that uh, Grimgore's messed up this runesmith pretty bad. And that has brought the Palance power back a little bit. It's not completely out of the uh, out of the realm of possibility for the Greenskins to win this, especially with this very healthy group of Black Orcs. The issue is the Iron Breakers, especially the Norgrimlings with their, what, 80-something melee defense. They will be able to hold despite the uh, Greenskins getting their Wah effect here, or even with, like, Sneaky Stabbing and so on. It's still going to be tough for the Greenskins to cut through this excellent defensive unit. Although, if Belagar goes down here, that could potentially swing things back. Uh, the loss of leadership, while not typically devastating, you know, in certain situations can be pretty tough for the Dwarves. But uh, looks like the, the cannon's been shut down. The runesmith may come back from route, but the gyros do still have some ammo at this point, but now going to be used to apply a rear charge penalty to try and route off some of these lower tier greenskin units like these boys, try and clear things out so they can start to focus a little bit more on the, uh, on the black orcs there. But yeah, uh, Belagar's getting messed up by Grimgore. Grimgore's still taking a lot of damage. He's getting relatively low on HP, but 
It's just a bad situation for Belagar. If he takes too many more hits from Grimgor like this, he's uh, not going to be a happy camper. And uh, his melee defense is holding up so far, but we'll see. Uh, Grimgor takes a hit there. He, his leadership is doing a lot better, though, than Belagar's, considering, yeah, one hit on Belagar routes him off there down to 300 HP, and suddenly the balance power is exactly back in even. You can see the uh, Slayer's almost gone. The Grumbling Guard actually routed off. So now it's just a matter of if the Norgrimling's Ironbreakers can hold out, maybe use up the rest of the ammo on these Gyrocopters, try and use them mobily to chase down routing units, potentially. Um, but we'll see. It's definitely going to be easier said than done. Grimgor is also now routed off as well. So the lords on both sides getting routed off. And Grimgor actually gets picked off by the Brimstone Guns. Very nice work by those gyrocopters to finish him. That is going to tip the balance power back slightly in favor of the dwarves. Definitely going to be some leadership issues and some point-blank blasting charges to help route off those savage orcs. At this point, it's a matter of if they can take care of these black orcs, if they can break their leadership. Suddenly, Shetland uh, comes around. Nice, another really nice volley of blasting charges. And I'd really like to see these gyrocopters potentially rear charge this last unit of black orcs here. They could potentially route them off. Although, I say that... There is still this one unbreakable 8-peak uh, loony here who is going to hold the leadership together until he's gone. So, yeah, probably want to try and steam gun this boy. Maybe not. Maybe these quarrelers will take care of him. But uh, anyway, the last of the Greenskin Infantry in the center pocket gets routed off. There are still some rallying units here, but at this point, it's pretty well in favor of the dwarves. But Grimgor was just about able to bring that back, just messing with the dwarves' leadership. Uh, taking out uh, Belagar and the Runesmith, both of whom actually survived. Um, and then Grimgor, you know, the dwarves, not not one to uh, take a, a wrongdoing lying down. Instantly, you know, just take vengeance on Grimgor with the gyrocopters, even before Belagar has actually fallen. He's down to 139 HP, getting pushed around by the, uh, the T-Frabas there. We'll see. Looks like there's some regrouping Savage Orcs and Black Orcs over here, so we might get a final phase of the battle. But uh, Brave Gyrocopter is going to charge down. They don't actually have much of a charge bonus. 25 is not terrible, but considering their combat stats are just abysmal. Uh, 31 melee attack, is that what they have? That's actually not the worst, interestingly enough. Um, so they can do some damage there. They have 66 weapon strength. So, I mean, again, they're not really something you want to use in melee. But once they're out of ammo, if you can rear charge a unit, a routing unit, you can definitely get some good value out of them. Um, in that way, but yeah, we're gonna fast forward a little bit through this late game as the dwarves are just cleaning up some routing units here They're uh, going after the chariot with the gyrocopters, which is just amazing Belagar is able to get his leadership back start to rally a few of these dwarf units together here But uh, yeah, you can see the green skins getting broken up over on the far side by the cycle charging gyros and Shetland is gonna be able to take a victory on that one. So very well played to both players. Hope you guys enjoyed watching that one The greenskins uh, took a little bit of a shellacking early on But like I said just about able to bring it back there with uh, Grimgor taking out the runesmith taking out um, <clears throat> routing off rather the uh, Belagar. So yeah, ultimately I think just the the Iron Breakers definitely a good pick here. Their very high melee defense means that they were able to just hold the line while the Gyrocopters did their work. 124 kills on the Steam Guns here. Very impressive. Both of the uh, Brimstone Guns also got an XP Chevron. Lots of kills on the Iron Breakers as well. 154, 124, 122 for the Dragonback Slay... Excuse, excuse me. For the Dragonback Slayers. 71 for the, uh, the Grumbling Guard here. And Grimgor, only 10 kills on him, but he did take out the Dwarf Leadership. Uh, 94 kills on these Black Orcs. It's really, really solid. 54 here, so definitely some solid kills on those Black Orcs. But yeah, just not quite enough at the uh, at the end of the day um, in terms of infantry stopping power. I would have personally liked to see him swap out these Savages for just more Skulkers. Uh, savages and Skulkers are right around the same price, and Skulkers, obviously, with their armor-piercing damage... Um, in my opinion, are a little bit better if we go ahead and have... Uh, I know they're not super comparable units, but just in terms of price, they're only 50 points off. And so let's have a look here. Obviously, the Savage Orcs, same melee defense, interestingly enough. They do have more HP, but less unit models. Uh, so a lot more HP per model and just more HP overall. Obviously, they don't have Stock or Vanguard. They pick up Frenzy, and they don't have either of the other utility uh, abilities here, Smoke Bomb or Opportunist Murder. But uh, they have more base weapon strength. Let's compare their total AP values. 9 AP 
on uh, Savage Orcs and 18 from Nasty Skulkers. So they have twice the amount of AP as Savage Orcs. Savage Orcs do have a better charge bonus, slightly, slightly higher melee attack, and better leadership. Obviously, they have no armor, but they do have physical resistance. So there are some differences there, but against a higher armor faction, definitely think it's more worthwhile to bring the Skulkers. Again, you get higher AP. If they're winning the fight, then they'll actually get this Opportunist Murderer, which gives them an additional plus 13 melee attack, putting them up to, what, 39? That's a lot of melee attack, even before things like WA. Um, of course, during stuff like WA, or if you give them Fists of Gork, or, uh, you know, uh, Sneaky Stabbing, and they start winning their combat, that's going to be an additional buff on top of that. So the Nasty Skulkers really can get much higher melee attack than the Savage Orcs. Of course, they don't have the same total weapon strength, but better AP values. The smoke bomb isn't really super useful against the, the dwarves, although you can sort of cheekily use it against gyrocopters. It will hit units in the air that are above the nasty skulker. It doesn't have to be on the ground necessarily, so you can actually, like if a gyrocopter is flying over your lines and trolling you super hard, you can... You can try and position a unit of nasty skulkers underneath it, hit it with a smoke bomb, and then use your archers or something else, some of the ranged units, to take it down while it's slowed. Um, but yeah, I just generally think that you would want to swap up those savage orcs for the nasty skulkers. If you were to do that, I think suddenly this build becomes a little bit scarier. Um, obviously, they don't have quite as much staying power, which is sort of a weird thing to say about savage orcs, is that they have more staying power than something else, but... They do, um, honestly, but I still prefer, personally, the Nasty Skulkers, at least in this matchup. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, though. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.